Hey everybody, welcome back to another Dead by Daylight video. So today's video is going to be a little different because the topic of it kind of comes for all live service games and all games in general really, but I want to narrow it down to a discussion on balancing in Dead by Daylight. Now I know people assume when I'm talking about balance I'm thinking of the competitive scene, which I'm not, and I'm not trying to make the game super competitive. I just think there's a fine line, and as I've said many times before, I think the game is in an okay spot balance-wise. But the thing I want to talk about is the idea of buffs and nerfs. And I'm going to say right now, I am guilty of doing this as well. But buffing and nerfing into relevance or irrelevance is not what we should be doing, and I don't think it's a good design philosophy, especially for a game like this where metas develop as fast as they do and stick around as long as they do. <coughs> I apologize for the cough. What we need to do, and this is a line from a white light video from Destiny 2 from a long time ago, rather than buffing and nerfing into relevance or irrelevance, buff and nerf into conversation. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, rather than making it so, okay, Dead Hard got hit with a super hard nerf, uh, just using it as an example, now it can't be used. Buckle Up got buffed into a super amazing state where combined with For the People, now it's extremely powerful. Pain Res got nerfed until it was basically useless and then buffed again to now where it's like pretty okay. Same with Pop back in the day and Ruin when it got changed. What I mean by buffing and nerfing in a conversation is rather than buff and nerf these things to where they're either so OP that everyone has to run them, or so useless no one ever wants to, cough, cough, thrill of the, or a uh, uh, beast of prey, cough, cough. Uh, just add effects, add things to them, buff the numbers so I can actually be like, okay, this is why I run this. Now, granted, there are some perks like that, but objectively speaking, there are perks that are better. I think Save the Best for Last is a good example. If you're not an M1 killer, like Clown or someone who basically can't rely on map mobility and has to get d fast downs to basically win every match and apply pressure that way, yeah, there's pretty much only like two or three builds you can realistically run. Same with someone like Wesker. Wesker is a little different because he's so powerful he can really run anything, but that's a, that's a whole other topic with, with killer power versus perk power. But what about someone like, let's take a middle of the road killer like oni or pyramid head or someone like that where there's really only a couple builds maybe three or four that you can realistically run and you could say well that's conversation right there yeah but a lot of times the perks overlap and the type of perk overlaps i would rather have the game be in a state where i'm thinking about what i'm bringing not so much i'm bringing this because it's good right because my favorite content creator said it was good, so I'm bringing it, right? I would rather have it be into a point to where I'm being like, okay, well, I could bring this, but this does this, so I'd rather bring that, right? There's not really very many good examples right now on either side. I've talked about before how I think Adrenaline's the best survivor perk design-wise. That doesn't mean that people aren't going to run it because it's not powerful. <laughs> Adrenaline is a great trump card perk and that's why it works as well as it does and it's basically a second chance and you, we all know that meta when it was around and everybody was bringing second chance perks that wasn't me advocating for an adrenaline nerf i'm just trying to make a point i just think rather than than buffing and nerfing things into complete irrelevance i think we really need to start thinking about how to make these perks more in line with each other with maybe a couple outliers on both sides because that's gonna happen not every perk can be viable it's just not possible and with the way the game works there's a lot of there's a lot of perks that just can't be viable for one reason or another because it it, it leads to a bad playstyle on both sides it's unhealthy or more likely because the way the game works just doesn't allow for it i think a good example is a perk like knockout why does a knockout work? Well, if someone's on comms, it basically does nothing. On top of that, as many would suggest, it's also a very unhealthy perk. It's one that I don't see get talked about that much, but it's a very unhealthy perk design, as much as I used to run it back in the day. And then on the survivor side, it's something like, 
overzealous or a lot of the gen perks apart from uh prove thyself just they can't be buffed the numbers are too finite and too specific because if they buff them too much it becomes too oppressive for the killer to deal with a lot of things that change timings in this game are something that can't really be fit or adjusted in such a way that makes them good or bad they just have to be kind of mediocre which i think is worse than either there's a lot of bad perks i can list off right now there's a lot of good perks i can list off right now there's ones in the middle of the road that are just kind of there no i probably couldn't tell you what they do half the time and I think that's a problem. I think we need more perks to, to settle into that middle ground and have like two two on each side in the S tier and two on each side in the in the F tier that are completely useless and completely OP. I think that's the ideal place where this game needs to be. Because that also allows for another thing that a lot of us are really missing right now and that's variety. It, it, it establishes variety and that's something that keeps a game going forever without any updates is variety but on top of the fact that a lot of these perks are just not good or up to par or have so many stipulations that why would you run them there's no reason to there's no you don't get any extra blood points you don't get any extra experience there's no ranked mode there's no set challenges other than the archive stuff I've said it before, and I'm probably going to make a whole video about this on an idea on how they could change your daily rituals and add weekly rituals that would kind of incentivize people to run other perks. And even in the idea of having a random perk generator in the game, not on a website outside of the game, we know they can do it. They did it in the archive challenges. We know it's possible. I would just love to see stuff like that. It, with incentives of some kind it doesn't have to just be blood points it could be extra experience or hell it could be um the the, the premium currency i know they don't give it that stuff away very often but i mean i don't think it's impossible for them to give us a little bit here and there for something like that to help make the game more healthy we're going on to a complete different tangent here just we need to start buffing and nerfing things in the conversation rather than out of relevance or to super op levels i'm so tired of every other month some perk getting put on the chopping block because it's either too strong mostly that we people really don't talk about the two weak perks which is a whole other topic on its own <laughs> wow this video stemmed into like four topics didn't it didn't that isn't that crazy how that happens anyways uh i love you guys uh like and sub and all that stuff and the twitch is below we're still going for the the 50 games with chucky we're on uh game 13 of no add-ons no perks we're still getting the data for that, and then we're going to switch over to the super meta build, see how things change. Once again, I, I'm aware that it's going to change. I'm aware that, that having all those perks and add-ons is probably going to make me win more. I'm just curious how much of a deficit, or how different it is uh, deficit-wise. Well, love you guys, and uh, yeah. Bye!